He was 5'11", light brown skin, clothed in all the right garments, but what I didn't see was deep within. It started with long conversations with a friend that I thought I could relate, but little did I know, this was just the bait. A building of a confidence that would soon strip my innocence, shred my self-esteem and then cause me to bleed within. Redefine my purity of mind, pollute my soul to the point where I would need divine healing. Yes, a revival in my soul, because I found that this illusion of Prince Charming was only a hoax. A lie that oh so many tell, because behind closed doors most of them are going through hell. And I too used to get my fashion fix, only Fendi, Louis, and Prada wasn't the solution to a heart in need of a man. With every purchase I was no closer to perfect, and found that material things lacked in purpose, because initially the plan was to be swept off my feet, lost in love with the man who would be my everything. Only he didn't keep his end of the bargain, and I soon became the target of his pride, lies, and lust, and throw it away like last week's garbage. Yes, I began to measure my worth by the measure of a man that came from the, the dirt. See, back then I hadn't discovered that God never intended for me to replace his last lover, nor to be his homie or his friend, nor to lean, rely on, or place my confidence in, but to be loved, honored, and respected like a jewel to be handled the kid. He says, I am fearfully and wonderfully made, not made up of my assets or of beauty that with time fades. As I began to come to my senses, I realized that this charming fella wasn't at all a prince. I would call him a frog, but much more like a serpent, full of deception. Never thought that it would be from him that I'd need protection. See, I finally moved him out of the way. But soon after, a few more knuckleheads came. And I can't fully put in them the blame, because it was I who was in need and thought that they could take away the pain. But that's not at all how it went. They just increased the scars and deposited bitterness. So here I was, mad with the world. In self-pity, I wallowed until I realized that I was a pearl. As highly prized as a gem, precious, one of a kind, and yes, daddy's little girl. Even then, I couldn't fully understand how the king of kings had chosen me to fulfill a purpose in. I mean, how could he redeem all the time that I had wasted? by bringing me to a place of humility where I could see that I was lost and naked. I had spent years looking for love in all the wrong places, but when I discovered his love, I knew no one could replace it. See, only he loved me when I was blind and couldn't see. When I was broken and rejected, he heard my plea. It was he who fed me when I desired me. And when my spirit needed reviving, it was on me he breathed. So ladies, I must ask you this. Why give a man a throne God never designed for him to sit? You see, if he's not seated in heavenly places in Christ, there's no way you should even consider being his wife. And yes, I know nobody's perfect, but unequally yoked is not where your worth is. And I too have entertained some pretenders until I realized that it was my fire that they were trying to kindle and ultimately put it out, leave me stagnant and empty, but he didn't revive me for me to die out. Yes, Lord, I thank you for your grace, because it was following me along with mercy. That's why I'm alive today. So I no longer seek the knights on the horses, nor the frogs turned princes, or the mass with underlying corpses. I realize that my completion is only in Christ. His love is never ending, and he doesn't change his mind. So I beseech you, brethren, to wait patiently for the Lord to sing your mate. You'll save yourself some agony and unnecessary pain. Keep working. Stay busy. You have territory to reclaim. And just know that Prince Charming was already at the door. Only it was your heart where he was knocking. You opened, now let him pour.